Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Blue Ridge Wildlife Cent uh, Center for another one of our Facebook Live adventures with our animal ambassadors. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about snakes, and we're going to meet our ambassador snake, Slim, who is an eastern rat snake. So Slim came to us uh, in 2015. He was found in a home uh, on a glue trap. If anybody knows what those are, they are a, a large pad of glue that a lot of pest removal companies will put down in order to catch mice or insects or other uh, kind of unwanted animals uh, in the wild or in, in the house rather. Uh, and unfortunately for snakes, those insects, those rodents, uh, they look like free food they also aren't able uh, a lot of times to register that the glue pad is a glue pad and so they kind of crawl across it uh, and get stuck and that stuff is not really made uh, for them to kind of get themselves off of easily. So in Slim's case he was found uh, on that glue trap and uh, when the homeowner tried to pull him off they did a lot of damage to his scales uh, and he had to be brought to us so that he could recover from that. You guys can see he's sticking his tongue out. So snakes do have a nose, like other animals, they are able to breathe through that nose and have a really good sense of smell. Um, but for the tongue, what they're able to do is stick their tongue out and gather up uh, particles in the air, and then they can stick them on a special organ on the roof of their mouth that allows them to actually taste those particles. So they can smell really well, and then if they want to, they can use their tongue uh, to kind of get a better idea. So uh, he can smell, whenever we go out to large groups of people, uh, he can smell that there's a lot of new people there. But by sticking his tongue out and getting those scent particles, he can actually taste different individuals in our large audiences. Kind of gives him a better idea of who's there. It's also one of their uh, many features that they have in order to catch their prey. Um, so their excellent eyesight, they are drawn to movement, so a lot of their prey will sit still. So if their eyesight is not enough to catch them, they can use their excellent sense of smell uh, and then their sense of taste to kind of find uh, to kind of find their prey items and go ahead and catch them. You can also see he's wrapping around my arm. Uh, he's very comfortable this way, kind of a. Um, using my arm as a tree branch. Um, these snakes are uh, very uh, comfortable up in trees as well as on the ground. Um, he's an eastern rat snake, formerly called a black rat snake. Uh, and this is his adult coloring. When they are babies, they do have more of a splotchy pattern that's very similar to uh, the copperhead, which gets these babies into a lot of trouble. Uh, people see the pattern first and are uh, they assume that it's a, a rattlesnake rather than one of these guys. Again, if you guys have questions as we go, please feel free to ask those. Uh, we'd be more than happy to kind of aim this conversation in any way that you guys would like. So one of the ways that these guys are able to climb trees are their scales. So they do have scales on their belly. I don't know if you guys can see very well, but he does have horizontal lines on his belly scale. Oh, Keith is coming in closer. There we go, you see those horizontal lines on his belly scales? Each one of those scales has a gap underneath, so he's able to stretch out, open up that gap, and then squeeze it over to use as kind of a set of fingertips. So it's like having fingertips all along his belly there um, that he can use to climb up. Well, actually, see, we built this board because somebody built, uh, built this lovely enrichment board for him uh, with different kinds of textures and branches that he can climb on. We'll go ahead and see if he wants to play around with that today. So snakes are basically one long spine. So from the tip of their head, the back of their head, all the way down uh, to almost all the way to the end of the tip of their tail. These guys have at least 180 bones in their spine. And then each vertebrae, each spine bone, each spine bone then has a set of ribs on each side. Um, so a very long spine, very long uh, set of ribs that are very loosely put together. So as they're swallowing their large pieces of food, uh, they can expand their body out and then as they digest it, uh, their body can shrink back down to size. 
going to be a blur. So Jennifer wants to, or no, excuse me, Vivian, age six, would like to know how sharp and long are his teeth? So their teeth aren't very big. They do have uh, a set of uh, skinny kind of needle-like teeth uh, in their mouth, and they're actually curved backwards. Um, if Keith can come in again, I do have uh, a skull here that you guys can look at. Show the non scary side. You see those small teeth curved in there. And for these guys, their teeth are curved backwards. So those teeth are not broken, they're naturally curved backwards. These guys don't really use their teeth for much except for helping them eat their food. So with these backwards curved teeth, what they can do is they can hook their teeth into their prey and then kind of squeeze and pull their uh, prey down their throat. Then the other side pulls forward, hook those teeth in and kind of work it. Um, later, we are gonna try to feed him and see if he wants to eat and kind of show you that mechanism uh, in action. Uh, Eastern rat snakes are constrictor snakes. So they, uh, they kill their prey by squeezing. So when they grab onto their prey, which they will use their teeth to kind of grab on, but they're not strong enough, uh, to do any real damage, and then they'll wrap their body around and kind of squeeze their prey until they're no longer able to breathe or no longer able to move, uh, and then they'll eat them from there. So Steve had a question. Uh, do they have a favorite tree that they like to climb? Uh, they don't have a favorite tree. Any tree that they have that has a, a rough kind of surface, so they do need a texture, um, so smooth things like glass, plastic, um, and some of the smoother bark trees are really difficult for them to climb uh, or impossible in terms of glass and things. Uh, but for these guys, as long as the tree has a texture, um, they're more than happy to climb up those and look for food sources. Uh, these guys eat not only small rodents, but they will also eat uh, birds and bird eggs. So they're uh, always up for climbing up into trees uh, to kind of find new food sources, as well as sunning and finding a place to sleep. How fast can he slither? So most snakes, uh, they can't go terribly fast. Um, for a snake like this, probably um, two or three miles per hour, not much more than that, um, when, they, when they really want to get going. Um, so not enough to outrun you if you really try, um, but enough to disappear really quickly before you can think about it. Um, they are a generally shy snake. They're not going to spend a lot of time with people. Uh, but they are also the most common snake that you will find uh, in and around your home. So they are uh, perfectly happy living in older homes, especially those that have uh, lots of little ways for, uh, for them to get in. And generally speaking, they're not in your home because they like it. They're in your home because there's a food source there. Uh, a lot of older homes have um, small crawl spaces that mice uh, and insects can get into, uh, and these guys are just following the food to get there. And are snakes social animals, or are they more solitary? Um, they're not. They're not strictly one way or the other. They don't have uh, social needs the way some animals do. The way some mammals have to interact with uh, with other mammals in order to have uh, a happy and, and uh, contented life. Uh, but they're also not strictly solitary. If there's enough food in an area, they will stay together. Um, also hatchlings, uh, once uh, all these babies hatch, they can stay in that same area uh, for up to two years, so you might find small groups of them. Um, they're not really getting a lot out of being there with each other, um, but they are happy to uh, kind of live in, in small groups together. So we have a question about poisonous and venomous. Yes. So uh, poisonous versus venomous really has to do with who does the biting. So if something is, uh, if you bite something and it makes you sick, that thing was poisonous. You did the biting. Uh, if, if, uh, if something bites you and you get sick, then that thing was venomous. So that's kind of the, the main difference uh, to tell the um, whether or not something is poisonous or venomous. So they're not interchangeable terms. Um, most snakes are not poisonous. I'm not sure there are any poisonous snakes, uh, but there are several venomous snakes. Uh, in Virginia, there's only three uh, venomous species. We have the cottonmouth or the water moccasin, which is found um, solely down in Southwest Virginia. We have the copperhead and we have the timber rattlesnake. 
all other snakes, and there's 32 different species of snake in Virginia, uh, all except those three are considered non-venomous, sometimes called harmless, uh, but please do remember all wildlife can bite. Uh, I am using my bare hands for him. He knows me. I handle him quite a bit, uh, but all wild snakes are going to bite first and ask questions later. So please do not try to handle wildlife with your bare hands. They can bite uh, and it is painful. So one of the ways that, I'm gonna go ahead and put him down for a second. One of the ways that you can tell the difference between uh, juvenile uh, copperheads and a black rat snake, uh, we'll do another close up if you wouldn't mind, Keith. Uh, this is an excellent resource if anybody wants to look. This is the, from the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, their guide to lizards and snakes. Uh, and in here, right down here, you can see the kind of blotchy pattern that uh, juvenile eastern rat snakes can have. Um, the main way to tell them apart from copperheads is this eye stripe right here that goes across the bridge of the nose. So it starts in the corner of the jaw, comes up around the eye, across their nose, and down the other side. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, we're not going to get that close to see, um, but that's usually a fairly easy um, distinction uh, for people to get up close and to see uh, and to know whether or not it is a copperhead or one of these guys. So we had a question about uh, techniques to convince these guys to not hang out at your house? Do mothballs work? And if not, what do you recommend? So we have not heard of any um, uh, exclusion techniques that's 100% uh, useful uh, or effective. Um, you can try any number of things. Um, mothballs, I know they sell snake repellents. There's a lot of um, talk on the market about uh, subsonic sound waves and things like that to kind of disturb them. Um, the best way, honestly, is to reduce their food source. So if you have snakes in and around your home, um, you most likely have mice, uh, sometimes insects in that same area. So you want to take, uh, take opportunities uh, to make sure that those animals are not living in your home. So making sure that food sources uh, and bedding nesting sources are kind of uh, secured in plastic or metal so that um, mice aren't able to find all these free food sources uh, that draw them into your house uh, and closing up any um, holes or gaps that are very obvious uh, to letting your uh, letting these animals in under crawl spaces and things are helpful as well now if you put down poison for rats and mice will that kill your snakes as well yes um, so rodenticides or poisons for these animals um, are a compounding um, uh, substance. So basically what that means is the animal that you poison is then poisonous to anything that eats it. Uh, so if you put down uh, rat poison or mouse poison and the mouse eats it, that mouse is now a poisonous mouse. If the snake comes and eats that, that snake will die from that poison and then will be poisonous as well to the next animal uh, that might come along and eat uh, those, the, the mice or the rust snake rather. Uh, and it, it's really not uh, a happy way to go. It's slow, it's painful, uh, and it's, it's something that we really recommend trying other methods first uh, because putting that out into the world unless you know that you're catching that mouse uh, and keeping that mouse from spreading it around, uh, you could be uh, poisoning other animals down the line. So non-specific uh, secondary poisoning. We have a question about how snakes move without legs. Mm -hmm. So snakes move without legs because of their, their muscles. So we talked about his scales um, that he has. And these scales, what they basically do, he's got long muscles uh, and these scales just kind of give him a little bit of a grip, um, kind of like the tire treads on your car, just a little bit of a grip. Uh, and what they'll do is they'll push their back end and that serpentine motion uh, to kind of draw their front end forward and they can kind of crawl along um, while they do. So they're really amazing when you watch them move around like that. Um, so again, all, all spine uh, and the rest of them is muscle, especially these constrictor snakes. Uh, they have a lot of muscle. They're very, very strong um, so that they can squeeze their prey successfully. So when these guys reproduce, how many babies do they have and how big are the babies? Uh, so the babies are fairly small. Um, this particular snake can lay anywhere between um, 6 and 20 or so eggs. 
uh, at a time. Uh, that usually happens uh, later in the summer, sometime around June. Uh, and the babies are, uh, they're in the, the nest, uh, in the egg, six or so weeks. Uh, and then they hatch and they can actually stay in that area um, for a short amount of time. And they're, they're pretty small uh, when they hatch. Um, as adults, these guys, on average, grow to be anywhere between um, uh, five and seven feet long. Uh, and it could take up to four years for them to reach that adult size. Uh, the uh, longest eastern rat snake on record in Virginia was six feet seven inches, so almost seven feet long. Uh, and there have been uh, records or tales of uh, snakes, of eastern rat snakes reaching as long as 10 to 15 feet uh, if they have a good food source. These guys grow depending on how much food that they eat. So if they live in a good area that has a lot of food, they can grow really quickly um, and they don't have to grow. It's not like other animals where they grow at a certain rate. Um, they grow really big, really fast, so they can still have their juvenile coloring but be full adult size. Um, and vice versa, if they live in an area where they have to work really hard to find every meal, you can have adult snakes that are very, very small. Uh, so slim actually came in um, probably at around uh, four feet uh, when he came in uh, in 2015 and he's lived with us uh, since then and he's probably now this is his latest shed here on the front of the table um, he is probably just uh, just shy of, of five feet now now if i were to find snake eggs what should i do if you uncover uh, a snake nest or any kind of reptile nest um, the best thing to do is to leave them alone, cover them back over if you can, and then walk away. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the really tricky things about reptile nests is that they, um, the eggs are very fragile, and unlike birds that will, that will frequently rotate their nests, uh, reptile eggs need to stay in the position that they've been laying in. So if you move them too much, if they get disturbed, um, the yolk can actually detach from the egg wall and the baby inside will stop developing or could die. Um, so the best thing to do is just leave them where they were, cover them back over. Um, if you've accidentally punctured one or two, you can always give us a call and depending on how developed it is, we might be able to do something. Um, we have done that in the past, but generally just leaving them where you find them is the best thing for them. I had a question from a gentleman. Uh, if he were to be hiking and a snake were to be disturbed by him being out in the woods and it were to latch onto him, mm -hmm. what's the best way to encourage him to let go? Um, so the best way to encourage him to let go is, is really to just relax, um, try to be non-threatening. Um, the trouble with, uh, with snake bites for, for certain things depends on how um, how latched on they are because they do have those uh, those backwards curved teeth. So a lot of times what happens is when they bite they get uh, they get stuck. So even though they don't want to be attached to you, it's really difficult for them to do that same motion backwards uh, and to get their teeth uh, out of it. So they, so sometimes they get caught uh, on uh, on your clothes and things like that, and then they're upset because they think you're holding on to them and really they're holding on. You. Um, so just trying to be as calm as possible um, and to make sure that if it's in your skin or something like that kind of really know what kind of snake it is uh, because if it is a venomous snake um, while they do have dry bites it is good to know what kind of snake it is if it is determined that you'll need an anti-venom uh, the hospital will want to know. So we had a question from Garrett who's nine years old and he wants to know what's the oldest documented snake that ever lived that we know of? That's an excellent question, and I do not know the answer to that one. But if you find out, let me know, because that's a really interesting thing to know. Uh, in, uh, on average, these guys can live uh, to be anywhere between 15 and 20 uh, in the wild, if they're really good at what they do, if they live in a good area. Uh, and he might live to be a little bit longer in captivity as well. Um, free food does wonders. How do you uh, feel about snakes as pets for kids? Um, for kids, we want to be really careful with that kind of distinction. Um, snakes as pets can be really wonderful, uh, as can any pet, um, but they do require 
a lot of time, a lot of attention, a lot of specialized care. Uh, so making sure that you have the time and commitment for an animal like this. Um, he does look really simple, looks like he doesn't need a lot, but he actually does. Uh, and you wanna make sure you have um, the way to give him all of those things to make sure that he has uh, everything he needs to, to be happy and to be healthy, um, to say um, for kids. I think it's great for kids to be uh, a, um, introduced to these kinds of animals, to have them in their lives, to understand the benefits of having snakes, uh, as well as to kind of understand that they're really not something to be afraid of, uh, something to be cautious of, obviously, because again, they can still bite, uh, but not something to be terrified of, to not want to have in the world. Um, so I definitely think it's all great to have them introduced to those things, um, but it's not uh, particularly an animal that you want uh, kids to be the sole caretaker for. So <clears throat> what type of animals prey on snakes and are, are raptors among them? Uh, yes, raptors are probably one of the biggest uh, predators for snakes. Pretty much anything that can catch them um, will eat them. They are, uh, they are just full of meat. <laughs> uh, so yeah, raptors, especially hawks. Uh, we actually have a black rat snake in care right now who is the victim of a hawk attack. Uh, a hawk tried to come down and get him. He's actually a little bit bigger even than Slim, um, probably another few inches both in width and length. Uh, and the hawk, a uh, red, red shoulder hawk, I think, uh, tried to come down and get him and missed. Uh, so he was actually able, um, the snake we have in care was able to kind of wrap himself around the hawk and they were at this uh, kind of uh, impasse. The hawk was not in a position um, to successfully uh, kill the snake and the snake wasn't strong enough to actually kill the hawk. So they're just kind of holding on to each other until one of them gave up. Um, and then we, we actually sent someone out to, to get them. So someone uh, was able to kind of get the snake and he's healing now from uh, several puncture wounds uh, and he should be good to go uh, once we're able to release our reptiles for the year. What are the types of things that's, that Slim would eat if he was out in the wild? Uh, so out in the wild he'd eat a variety of things. Uh, he would eat any small furry rodents he came across, mice, um, rats even, the larger ones can, uh, can take uh, whole rats. Um, anything that they can kind of get their hands or their, their mouths on, they don't have hands. Uh, but they'll also eat, uh, especially as babies, they'll eat a lot of insects. Uh, when they're smaller, they eat a lot of insects. Um, they'll eat smuggling lizards. Uh, and again, they eat uh, eggs and birds. And uh, one of the really cool things that they do uh, with eggs is they have a, a pouch in their neck and they will swallow the egg whole, kind of sit it in that pouch, and then crush it against the ground uh, so that it's able to go down, uh, down their throat easier. Um, so it's kind of really cool to watch that happen as well. Uh, so speaking of eating, we're gonna go ahead and see if he will eat for you guys. Um, it is not his, uh, his day to eat, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Uh, a fair warning, if anybody is squeamish, I am going to be feeding him mice. Uh, they are not alive, they are pre-dead mice, uh, but I do know that it can upset some people, so fair warning. working his mouth back and forth, using those teeth to kind of pull food down. And then he'll use his muscles uh, along the sides of his body uh, to pull down uh, some more until it works down into his stomach. So snakes have, uh, everybody knows their, their jaw um, can be quote unquote unhinged. Um, there's actually a, a specialized bone that allows them to open their mouth really wide up and down. Um, they also have a split in their bottom jaw that allows them to open really wide side to side. I can't tell if you could see how loose his mouth was. Um, but this shared mechanism actually allows them uh, to swallow food that's three times the size of their head. So their, their uh, mouth can stretch out that much. And then we're going to do another. Try again, and it can be very quick. We'll let him swallow that one down. You can see the lump moving, 
and he knows there's more. Attracted to movement, so we shake it a little bit. And these are fairly small, so he's not even bothering to do the whole squeeze. He's just going straight, straight in. So we feed him like this about once a week, keeping an eye on his on his weight uh, as well as his general attitude. So we could feed him more, um, but he uh, he again it's not his day to eat, but you can see he's very happy to eat. Uh, he likes to eat, and he did get a little overweight, uh, so he's on a bit of a diet. <laughs> What's the largest animal he can eat? Um, for him, uh, being the size that he is, a large mouse, a small baby rat, um, he could probably take. Um, for uh, for birds, maybe a young robin, something like that. Um, obviously, larger specimens can eat uh, larger animals. So for him, uh, we, we usually do large mice. Um, when we have them, we will often give him quail eggs as well. Um, he does seem to like those uh, as well. They're, um, they're fairly small. Do snakes have a stomach? And if so, how far down is it? Uh, they do have a stomach. It's pretty far down. Um, the fun thing about snakes is they have all the same organs that we do. They're just all really long and really all stretched out. Um, so their heart's really small. It's about seven or so inches down. Uh, and then past that, they have uh, one lung is really small, and then they have a really long lung. Um, layered kind of next to that uh, is their, their stomach and then their intestines uh, and kind of everything instead of being stacked the way ours are uh, because we're a vertical creature um, being horizontal theirs are kind of laid out long wise um, along their, their long bodies. So yes, they do have a stomach. And how will this live? Um, so we're not entirely sure how old he is. Uh, when he came in, he did have most of his adult coloring, which means he's probably uh, somewhere between four uh, when he, you know, four or five when he came in, uh, and he's been with us for about five years now. Um, so we know he is at least five um, when he was, and as an adult, he was probably at least, uh, you know, anywhere between two and five when he came in. Uh, so he's anywhere between seven and ten. He could even be older than that. Uh, once they kind of get their adult coloring, it's really hard to tell. Uh, he does have um, some of his juvie coloring still. You can still you can see his white uh, that diamond kind of pattern. That's unusual um, most of the time for black rat snakes. Once they get their adult coloring, they're a much glossier black. Uh, on top and then the white checkerboard um, on the bottom. So we're not quite sure why he held on to so much of his juvenile patterning, uh, but he's had that since he came in and it's not changing. So he's definitely a full grown adult, uh, but it's hard for us to pinpoint exactly how old he is. Is there a way to tell between males and females? Uh, not externally, there isn't. Um, so to, to tell between males and females, you do have to kind of either see them laying eggs uh, or to go in and kind of look uh, internally. There are some other uh, methods that I know breeders and other, um, other researchers can use, um, but it's not something that I feel, um, I'm not sure it's 100% accurate, uh, and it's not something I'm very well versed in. Um, we don't seem to, to care one way or another um, what, uh, what gender our, our ambassadors are. So we've had a lot of questions about what your favorite snake is. Ooh, my favorite snake. Um, I'm not sure I have a favorite snake. I like them all. I think they're really cool. Um, I like that all snakes can swim. I think that's a lot of fun. Um, I like that they have um, such different ways of finding their food and catching their food. Uh, I enjoy watching them eat. 
I think that's a really awesome uh, adaptation that they're able to have that they can do almost everything that I can do and they don't have hands, they can climb trees, um, they can catch their food, they can eat it, they can do so much. Uh, and they're just this long ribbon. Uh, but there are some really awesome snakes out there and I recommend looking up all of them because some of them are really pretty uh, and really cool. Um, I like the ring neck snake as well. They're just this little unassuming snake with a, uh, all black with a little golden ring uh, around their neck. Um, and they're just very, very clean uh, in, their, um, in their kind of coloring. So thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you had a good time and enjoyed meeting Slim. Again, please feel free to like and subscribe, um, share this page, and we hope that you will join us on Friday uh, for another presentation.